What's up everybody, it's Dr. Jordan Taylor, Undergraduate Exercise Science Program Director and Associate Teaching Professor at the University of Kansas. This is the final video in a three-part series where I'm discussing blood flow restriction training or BFR training. I've got my longtime friend Kyla Reed here with me today in the lab. Kyler is an ex-Nebraska Cornhusker football player and former Highland Community College assistant football and strength coach. And we're going to demonstrate an upper body BFR resistance training workout. And uh, obviously Kyler is warming up here and uh, getting his uh, arms ready for this BFR training session. <laughs> okay, so you saw Kyler doing his curls on the intro there. And uh, he obviously did a warm up. He's warmed up, ready to go. Now we have these different types of bands that are strapped on, right? And there's different types of bands and cuffs that you can use for BFR training, all right? So myself, I have um, what are called air bands. These are for a couple hundred dollars on the internet. Um, there's also smart cuffs that can be used by smart tools. Those are often used in PT clinics. Um, so these almost work like a blood pressure cuff where they're paired with my smartphone. I inflate the cuff starts to clamp down and constrict arterial inflow into the muscle and it measures at what pressure arterial blood flowing into the muscle is totally occluded, right? That gives it a total arterial occlusion pressure. Now, to work out, it's, I had it set at 50% of my total arterial occlusion pressure. So based on 50% of where that arterial blood inflow is occluded, that's the pressure it will inflate to when I do my workout, all right? Because the point is, we don't want to completely occlude arterial inflow of blood, right? This isn't a tourniquet. That's, you know, like my arm or Kyler's arms are not blown off from, you know, being at war in a battlefield and we need to put a tourniquet on to prevent arterial blood from flowing out. That's a tourniquet to prevent blood loss. The point here is that we restrict slightly some blood flow in because the arteries are deeper, but the more superficial veins, they can be occluded with less pressure than the total arterial occlusion pressure because veins are more superficial, right? I mean, you can see his cephalic vein is <laughs> popping out right here. So remember, the veins bring blood out of the muscle back to the heart. The arteries bring it in. So we're wanting to occlude blood flow from the veins back to the heart, trap it in the muscle, but still allow some arterial inflow of blood, all right? So these are more expensive. Now, what Kyler has... These are just um, BFR training bands. You can order these for like 20 bucks online, right? And they have some numbers here so they can help you adjust the tightness. You might ask, well, you can't measure arterial occlusion pressure with these, so how do you know how tight to wrap them? You basically want to put them on, strap them just below the deltoid, right? Just under the deltoid muscle, above the bicep and tricep, with a level of tightness on a 0 to 10 scale of about a 7. So 70% of maximal tightness. And you should be able to fit you know, if, I, if we look on the outside here, a couple, couple finger, uh, fingers underneath the band, okay? It, air on the side of them being slightly loose versus tight, because if they're too tight, it'll act as a tourniquet and constrict blood flow from going in, okay? Remember, we're wanting to trap it in the muscle and prevent it from coming out, all right? So now we're going to demonstrate a BFR training session. So, again, Kyler's just going to sit here and <laughs> rep out some curls for you. All right, so to fatigue, just some dumbbell curls or near fatigue, all right? A common protocol is to do close to 30 reps for the first set. Now again, you might ask, well, what load should you use, all right? Typically, use a load that is lighter, quite a bit lighter than what you normally curl like say between 20 to 50% of your one rep max, right? We're using light loads here, creating metabolic stress inside the bicep muscle, and that metabolic stress is gonna lead to some strength gains and muscle mass gains, uh, similar to what you would see if you were doing heavy load training, okay? Getting close to fatigue? Yeah. Okay, take a, take a short break. Okay, short break. 30 second rest, 30 second rest period. I'll keep talking. So 30 second rest, short period, short rest period. You stay occluded during the rest period, okay? All right, so we're gonna stay occluded. Now, um, you might be wondering like, well, who can use this? Well, it's been used in frail elderly. Again, it's used in PT clinics for individuals. Maybe they've had a shoulder injury, or you can also do BFR for the legs, for the lower extremity. Um, maybe they're coming off an ACL reconstruction. So when you're rehabbing from an injury, you cannot lift heavy, right? Right away, you have to lift light. So this helps give you 
uh, a pretty significant training stress to elicit muscular adaptations like increase in strength and, and size with a light load. But you normally wouldn't see those increases in strength gains and size using light loads like this if you were not occluded. So that's why you use the occlusion, right? It's the trapping of blood in the muscle that creates a metabolic stress, cellular swelling, and that cellular swelling acts as a signal for the muscle cell to say, oh man, I've got to get larger and stronger, right? Okay. So again, we're going to go close to fatigue here. Good? Okay. I'd say maybe even go a little lighter next set. How are your, uh, so again, 30 second short rest period. How's it, how's it feeling so far? Pretty? It's, it feels good. I mean, pretty it, swollen. <laughs> He comes on quick. Yeah, it doesn't take much because again, we're allowing some arterial blood flow of, uh, into the muscle, right? From the heart, arteries are bringing blood into the muscle, but we're trapping the more superficial veins or occluding those and trapping blood in the muscle so it can't return out. Again, you don't want to stay occluded for longer than 15 minutes total at a time. So, you know, after he performs two more sets of curls, we're going to unstrap him before we go to the next exercise and give him a one to two minute break. But again, he's going to near fatigue. At some point, it's going to feel uh, uncomfortable, okay? It just is. Um, it, you're going to feel some burning, maybe even slight pain. Now, again, this is why you only do it for brief periods of time. So again, rest 30 seconds. We're going to do one more set. And then we're going to unstrap him and, and return blood flow and let that blood flow out for a minute after he does one more set. Now, you might wonder, well, if we're occluding here, is he only getting a benefit in the muscles that are distal or underneath the band? Not necessarily, because once we unstrap this and the blood starts flowing back out of his bicep here, it's going to be traveling back towards the heart. There's going to be growth factors, hormones released. So the more proximal muscles like the delts, pectoralis major, even the back, the upper back muscles, they're going to get a benefit, okay, once that blood flow is, is released and returned. So we're going to do the last set here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can barely lift your arms because you've done so many. <laughs> Anchorman, great movie. Watch it. Deep burn. <laughs> Subjectively, like, how does it feel? What do you feel right now? I mean, is it... How does your muscle feel? Very full. <laughs> very full and very fatigued. Uh, I mean, I felt even into my forearms. Right, right. And, yeah, tired. All right, so we're going to do, a, we're going to unstrap him, okay? So let that blood flow out, and then we're going to show one more exercise in basically this arm training session today, okay? All right, so we finished up his uh, BFR training for the bicep workout. Now we're going to move into basically dumbbell skull crushers, right? So working a tricep. Uh, so again, we're going to do four sets with a light load, anywhere between 20 to 50% of your one rep max. I think Kyler's got some 20s and 15s here, so light dumbbells. And uh, again, a common rep protocol, like I said, you want to go to near fatigue or, f or, or fatigue each set. But he's going to lay back, just extend the arms over, keeping the elbows in line with the shoulder, and just doing some dumbbell tricep extensions, right? So again, working the elbow extensors back here. Triceps, brachii, and conius. And again, remember, I gave him about a one to two minute rest period between the dumbbell bicep curl, uh, the four sets of dumbbell bicep curls and this exercise, okay? So, but he's gonna stay occluded again through all four sets of these tricep extensions, all right? Ooh. Starting to feel it now? Oh yeah. <laughs> Again, a lot of buildup of different metabolites here. Lactate ions are going to accumulate because you're breaking down glycogen, stored glycogen. That's stored carbohydrate in the muscle cells. That's getting broken down through a process known as glycolysis. So you produce lactate, you produce hydrogen ions. There's also going to be inorganic phosphate being built up from the breakdown of uh, ATP, which is the energy that your cells need to contract and relax. 
So you're building up these waste products, blood's being trapped in there, and again, that's creating this metabolic stress on the cells that helps to elicit gains in strength and size that you normally wouldn't see if you lifted these light weights without these bands on, without being restricted, okay? You would normally need to lift heavier loads, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you should, a lot of times people will ask, well, should I do heavy load resistance training or should I do BFR training, light load? Um, I think for a lot of athletes or bodybuilders, this can be used as an adjunct, this BFR training after a heavy load workout, kind of as a finisher, like a finishing exercise. Uh, again, in the rehab population, somebody with an injury um, that cannot lift heavy, this can be a great way as you're going through the rehab process to try to maintain some gains in, uh, in strength and, and size, uh, or main maintain muscle loss, but also then improve gains in muscle strength and size, okay? so. Um, still do your heavy load resistance training. You need to do that. I wouldn't just rely solely on BFR training, you know, if you're an athlete, a bodybuilder, or just a fitness enthusiast in general. You still need to do that heavy load, high volume training for, for muscle strength and, and gains in muscle size. But this can be a, a good adjunct to it, okay? Especially like during a deload week. So he rested 30 seconds, staying occluded, back to it again. But again, like if you're in a deload week, maybe your joints have been bothering you. Uh, you know, your tendons, your ligaments, and you're like, man, I just need a week of lighter lifting. Then use some BFR training that week during that deload phase, okay? So, again, there's a lot of different ways that this can be implemented and integrated into your overall program design, all right? So that was your third set, right? Yeah. So I've just been here flapping my mouth and losing track of what you're doing, so. <clears throat> Final set four. Uh, yeah, you'll do one more set. So we'll, we'll be down to the last set. Again, he's staying occluded the whole time. Short 30 second rest periods, light weights, a lot lighter than what you would typically lift on those heavy load training days. Okay. You got a good fair amount of back sweat going on and pec sweat and ab sweat. You got sweat everywhere. <laughs> so the last set. And again, like I said, it's, it's, when I first saw this training technique, I was very skeptical. I was like, this can't be good. Like, you're trapping blood in the muscle. What about blood clots? Things like that. And actually, there's been some studies come out, out on that where, you know, even in clinical populations, the risk of blood clots is very minimal. And in, in, in some studies, they've even shown that it may help reduce blood clotting, okay, or fibrinolysis, okay? So that's breaking clots apart. But again, overall, it seems to be pretty safe. I think they need to continue doing studies in this area, um, you know, and further research needs to be conducted. But for right now, it, it can be beneficial for a lot of different people. How do you feel? I feel like I got a whole tricep workout uh, done in a couple minutes. Like I'm yeah. very fatigued. I mean... Like I'm sore already. You think you might start using it in addition to kind of what you're already doing with your, with your yeah, workouts? I think it'd be something beneficial to use and add into what I'm already doing along with the heavier stuff. Right, so say maybe you do it at the end of an upper body day, like maybe he does a chest back workout or an arm workout and then at the end he just wants to polish things off so he throws in some BFR training. Four sets, light load, stay occluded the whole time, you're done. Well, Kyler, thanks again for coming in today and uh, uh, sculpting your guns. <laughs> How can people contact you if they have questions about football, uh, your approach to strength training, or even BFR training? Um, what, you know, what, what contact info do you have? You can contact me on Instagram at kspeed25 or Twitter, kspeed with four E's, 25. And if you have questions for me about the KU Exercise Science Program, uh, contact me at jtaylor at ku.edu or call 913-897-8516. Thanks for watching this Fitness Facts video.